Hey everyone! Today I thought I'd have a chat to you about this concept of understanding performance end-to-end -end from a customer's perspective. Um, a few weeks back now, I think I called the blog post the one transformation tool to rule them all. Um, we've talked about this idea of going to a place where your customers turn up, whether that be a call center or maybe a frontline help desk like a reception desk, anywhere that you're interacting with your customers and listening to what they're saying, what they're asking for, what their pain points are, um, and out of that getting an understanding of how well um, we're, being a we're able to perform in the eyes of our customers. So we talked about that initial exercise of actually just going and listening to see what's happening and, and starting to understand uh, how often our customers are coming to us with something that we can actually add some value for them versus maybe the number of times that they turn up and there's a problem or we didn't do something right or we made a mistake and we're having to fix it. Um, so we started with that core piece and um, for me that's it's still my go-to technique. Whenever I start working in your organization, that's one of the first things I do is I go and do call listening or customer listening exercises. But this idea of uh, insights into performance from a customer's point of view kind of builds off that. So once you've got that initial view of what customers are asking for, um, what we can do is we can start to take one of those particular inquiries and follow it all the way through the organization. So probably the best way to do this would be an example. <laughs> so if we have a whole series of demand and we've worked, we've worked through, um, you know, there's 80% of it's stuff that really we should just be, we should not even have to do in the first place, but there's a 20% um, demand piece, which is customers wanting to buy our product or service or, um, you know, asking for some help in setting it up or those sorts of things where we can really add value and we wanted to be doing more of that. Um, we've gone through that initial process and then if we were to pick up one of those inquiries and for the sake of argument, let's say that we're picking up a purchase inquiry. Um, and let's imagine that we work for an airline. So that purchase inquiry might be, I would like to buy a ticket from in my case, Queenstown, to Auckland, say, domestic flight. Um, maybe you're on the Melbourne-Sydney commuter route. Pretty sure the international thing's not happening just at the moment, but we'll get there. Uh, so let's imagine that you pick up one of those inquiries that you've heard whilst listening to your call center traffic or on your frontline desk. And this inquiry says, I want to take a flight from uh, Queenstown up to Auckland. And I want to do that on a particular day. Um, and uh, so, so that, that inquiry has come in. What happens next? What we want to start to do is follow step by step through the organization all the way along the chain. What are the chain of events that occur between that initial request from the customer and getting them what it was that they actually asked for? Now, in this case, a flight from Queenstown to Auckland, we're never going to deliver it straight off over the phone as an, if, if it comes through as a phone inquiry. It's just not going to happen. But we want to understand that flow and all the steps that happen and then start to dive into where we might make improvement based on optimizing the whole of the end to end. So in a past life, we might have looked at the IT systems and um, the amount of uptime that we've got or the volume of orders that we can process or um, or those type of metrics, and then we might have looked at uh, the, the check-in procedure and how long the queues are for people checking into their flights, and then we might have looked at the flight itself and how well that's performing and the NPS scores that we get back that ask you, did you enjoy your flight and are you likely to recommend us, and then we might have a look at um, baggage handling, say, at the end of the flight and how many inquiries we get for lost baggage. And so each of these silos, each of these business units would have their own metrics and then at some point they would roll up and we would make a judgment based on how well we're performing across all of those things as to whether or not we're doing a good job. What I want to do is flip that on its head a little bit. So start with that flight from Queenstown to Auckland. What happens next? 
Well, somebody probably keys that into a booking system, right? So there's, there's probably some kind of system where we capture that data and we capture that order and we record it. So that's cool. What happens next? Maybe not all of those orders get captured correctly and some of them get jammed in the system and fall out. So it'd be interesting to know how many of those happen. But let's say, let's say that's not the case and then, and then our customer moves along to the next step in the process. What happens when they turn up to check in? Are they turning up with uh, their ticket already on their mobile phone and it's just a remote uh, QR code scan to get on the plane, for example? Are they turning up with a printed ticket, which again, they can walk straight to the gate and scan that at the QR code scanner? Are they turning up with a printed ticket and needing to log in um, their, their baggage and get that onto the plane because they've got more than carry-on and they've got an extra bag? So how many customers at each stage are hitting each of these steps? Let's assume, in this case, that our customer has their ticket on their mobile phone, either on email or on their boarding app, and they scan it at the gate and they've just got their carry-on luggage and that's all we want to do. We get onto the plane, we get into our seat, we take our trip, we get off at the other end, we've got baggage to collect and then we're away in a taxi or, or pick up or whatever happens. Now understanding from a customer's perspective what good looks like is about understanding from the point that we made that initial inquiry all the way through to the end to the point that I get off the plane and I'm on to the next thing how well did each of those steps work did we fall out and end up um, did our you know did our order get jammed in the system and actually we turned up to the plane and nobody knew that we even had a ticket and that's pretty disastrous or did we go further along and you know we couldn't we, we had trouble when we went to check our bags in because we hadn't purchased a bag ahead of time because we thought it was included and how many people are getting stuck in that process um, versus say we turned up and we knew we had to get in a queue and we ended up waiting an hour and a half to get on the plane. How many people are stuck in that process? And so as you start to build that end-to-end -end flow and you start to see the different paths that customers can take and the loops that they can get caught into and how many of them are sitting in each of these areas, what it does is it helps to build a picture end-to-end -end of performance and how well we're performing in the eyes of our customers. So rather than those metrics that sit within each of those business units and each of those parts of the process and adding them up to try and get an overall view what we're doing is we're the, it's the 90 degree turn and we're trying to see end to end how many customers flow through frictionless how many customers go through and get stuck at the first hurdle how many customers flow through and might have a couple of little quirks before they actually make it out the other end and then you you're building that holistic picture of performance end to end and so it doesn't necessarily invalidate those business unit or those, uh, those area measures, but it adds to the picture overall. It adds to our view and our understanding of what that looks like from a customer's perspective. So your homework for this week, because I'm getting good at these call to actions, I'm, I'm on it. Your homework this week is to go out and if you haven't done your customer demand capture, go back and listen to the video where I talk about customer listening. It's earlier on in the blog. It's probably about six or eight weeks ago now. So go back and do that. Plonk yourself down. Listen to a bunch of phone calls or a bunch of inquiries that come up to your frontline desk. Do that for about half a day. And then once you've got that data, choose one of those particular interactions and see if you can follow it through every step in the process that's required to take you from when that initial inquiry was made all the way through to when the customer got what it was that they actually wanted. Some of them will be very simple. Some of them we might solve on the phone call in the moment. That's great. Others might have to get passed around and handed off to another team to do some work and then handed back. And, you know, even something as small as uh, issuing a refund. From a customer's perspective, the inquiry is not done when they get off the phone and we say, yes, that's okay, assuming that we're, we're going ahead with the refund. It's done from their perspective when the money actually lands in their bank. 
So see if you can get into some of the nitty gritty of all of the steps that need to, to take place for the customer to actually get what it was that they want in that, from that first initial inquiry. So that's your homework this week. I would love you to leave me a comment below and let me know how you go with that little exercise. Um, and let me know if I'm pitching it too high and too conceptual or um, if we've got the level just right and, um, and that's all making sense. Have a lovely, lovely week wherever you are. Take care and um, we'll see you next week.